Jamie, thank you for joining us again. We are in our third of a series regarding e-commerce and we're really happy to have you here with us. We've got a good group today, about 15 people on the call. So that's fantastic. I sent out a last minute appeal about 45 minutes ago. And so you got 45 minutes left to go. Anyway, we've got a <laughs> number of people on board. So sometimes it really is what's in front of your face that makes people catch on and say, okay, I can do that right now. And yes, the we, newest and loudest, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And when we talk about um, when we talk about how we advertise and this whole concept of why we advertise, because we've been working through the the stages of the of building the relationship with your customer. And depending on where you are in that relationship, advertising could mean different things. So if you're still and it also depends on where you live. So if your website is the space where you draw your customers the most and that's where you want to engage with them in a transaction, then does that mean you wanna put more emphasis on say your Google or your SEO? Alternatively, we hear about social media being the freest way to advertise, but it's completely monetized now as well. Because back in the day, if you put the right words into your into the alt tags in your website, you could get people, you could be number one on that Google search, no matter what. So anyway, each of these, uh, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, they've all figured out a way to monetize people's use and also listen to what you're saying so that those ads pop up. But I'm gonna turn it over to you and maybe you could tell us a little bit more. And we could start sure. in with Google. Let's start with Google, because that's kind of the first thing. Well, absolutely. Yeah. Google's going to be essential for uh, a couple of different reasons. Uh, first of all, you're going to want to make sure that your website is properly optimized for search engines so that when Google does its organic reach and sends out its little digital spiders to catalog your website, that uh, it's, it's doing just that. It's making sure that uh, it's cataloging you with proper keywords that are on your website that hopefully will put you, you know, fairly high in search ranking um you know the ideal place to be of course is uh, on the front page of google search um also too if you have a brick and mortar location uh, you're going to want to take advantage of google my business and if you're not familiar with that already um you should be um, this is an easy and free way to register your business it helps google and it helps you where you are providing the most accurate and up-to-date information on your businesses address, phone number, hours of operation, website, um, way to contact you. And then of course that allows for review uh, of people uh, or from people who have hopefully used your product and service um, and they're posting on there. Now, along with those reviews will come the responsibility of monitoring those reviews, making sure that you're uh, A, addressing any issues that come up uh, because the internet is kind of like the glass door where you are probably going to hear from more people who have issues than you do from people who are thrilled with your product or service. But um, also, too, you're going to want to thank those people who do take the time uh, because they're going to be more, uh, much more rare to actually post something great and positive about your business on Google. So these are all free services. You can go into further... Um, positioning and advertising with uh, Google AdSense. And uh, you can also uh, do something like adding uh, Google AdWords to your website. But if you've been on older websites, you recognize that certainly Google AdWords can be cumbersome and clunky and not very elegant looking on your website. And it doesn't really provide that much income. But what I'm really talking about, that's a different thing. Uh, what I really want to focus on, of course, is Google advertising for your business that would appear in other search results. So as an example, um, I might have uh, some Google advertising going up that is specific to my postal code and my business sector. So that when people are searching on websites and uh, viewing websites uh, that fit those parameters, no matter where the website is located, if they're part of a Google AdWords program, my advertising hopefully will show up uh, for those local viewers that are taking a look at that website. You get what I mean? 
Um, so that's the type of thing that you can look at. Um, however, before I want to, before we go into the advertising part, um, I want to consider this as a, as a total marketing plan. Um, and there's lots you can do without spending money first. Um, the first and first and foremost thing I, I'm going to emphasize is that this is going to be work. All of this is work. Uh, it makes it much easier to spend less money and to micro target those customers and potential customers that your business wants to reach, but it still works. Um, because it's going to re require your time and attention. And what I mean by that is the first and easiest thing you can do is uh, address every single person who sends you a message, leaves a comment. Uh, and this might seem self-evident, but so many businesses neglect this really easy and simple step. Um, no matter where the comment or message is coming from, whether it's on social media like a Facebook, Twitter, or if they're leaving a, a comment in a review on you know, Google or on uh, uh, any kind of platform like Yelp or even TripAdvisor. Uh, you want to address all of those with either a thank you for, you know, a good and positive comment or um, thanking them for bringing issues to your attention and then dealing with them offline directly so you can address those issues. And then from there on, it's just a matter of customer retention techniques that uh, you can do research on. Um, but it's also a great way to reach out to potential new customers. Um, I hear great stories of people who are really savvy when it comes to finding the names of the exact people that are going to make those, those purchasing decisions. Say if you have a B2B business where you're marketing to another business and um, you've determined that you figured out you've got a nice list of the directors and, and managers of purchasing and, and the people that you directly want to sell to. You can find these people online. You can find out that uh, Dave over at Coca-Cola is a big fan of the Jets for some reason. And uh, you can make a comment on something that he posts, like, oh my God, the Jets lost again. I can't believe this. You can comment on that. You can uh, you know, be part of his social circle in platforms like Instagram and Twitter. You can see that you've made a comment, click on your bio, see what you do for a living, and you can create a relationship that way. These organic reach relationships do work. Um, I've heard of people being hired over Instagram. I've heard of people making sales over social media platforms and not ever speaking to the person because they're just making this organic reach where it's, it's, it's digital networking, where you're not in a room together in person, but you're hanging out in almost uh, subject circles or, or, or platform circles. Yeah, and I think that that's a really good point because you can either invest time or invest money, but nothing is free. So as much okay. as we might, yeah, as much as we might think social media doesn't cost us anything, you do have to have, and this is why there's a whole industry around digital marketing and why we pay people to do that. And understand, but having a plan at the back end is also important. You need to know who you want to connect with, how often you want to connect with them. And what the and whether or not you have a specific call to action, or whether or not you're building that relationship. So that's right. Yeah, you you're still going to need a traditional, or not a traditional, but a sound marketing and advertising plan. It's just the channels that you're executing these things on are going to be a little bit different. Um, you know, you're you're using digital platforms to um, spread the word and to generate um, you know marketing buzz for your business instead of print advertising and display advertising, or uh, in addition to those. I'm, right. I'm never one for discounting any of these platforms if they're working for you. You know, if you're getting a lot of traction from that from that transit ad on that park bench over by a senior's home because that's your target market, then yeah, run with it. Um, what I would question though is your return on investment. Um, a lot of these traditional advertising and marketing platforms are, are, are pricey, especially if you're a small business or if you're starting out. And, uh, and, and the results that you get from that, um, you need to measure very, very carefully and, uh, and quickly to ensure that you're not putting more money into maybe a, a funnel that's not paying off for you. While you could do that online, target specifically by interest, by job category, by you know, postal code, and all of these things, and get much better return for your ad spend. Uh, I've mentioned this before, I'm not married to any one of these platforms. Um, as long as I know that I'm getting good return or great return on the dollars that I'm spending versus, you know, what I'm getting back from more traditional uh, advertising platforms like printer online. It sounds like I'm, I'm poo-pooing these and I'm not. 
Um, no. But again, the, a lot of these platforms haven't adjusted to 21st century marketing and advertising where um, you, they really need to revisit. And some of them have. Radio has been pretty quick to react. And yes. they're adjusting their, their fees and prices accordingly, I think. Right. Well, and especially in our particular region where radio is, a, is first of all, locally owned. And mm -hmm. it is a source of a lot of our local information. So that's kind of the go-to. And because each of the stations or each of the locally owned stations have three different marketplaces or two different marketplaces with the genre of music that they play. Yeah. Uh, the big trick then becomes really understanding what demographic you fit into. Do you, and how old are your customers and what do they, well, again, and, it comes back to developing a plan. Yeah, and this is where Belleville is kind of unique. I was really impressed when I first moved to Belleville 10 years ago with how many radio stations there were. I was, I was kind of surprised and I didn't quite understand it at first. And then I realized that there's that valley in that Coburg Poor Hope area where you start losing all of the GTA based radio stations and it's a dead zone. And then a lot of, you know, so obviously the heart of radio in this region is Belleville. So that's why you've got, you know, you've got three and four different companies with one and two different stations each. Yeah. Um, and on top of that, we have the consistently, you know, top three or sometimes the top rated country music radio station in the country here. Um, right. I'm not blowing their horn. I'm just stating facts. Um, <laughs> that, you know, it's not in Calgary. It's not in Vancouver. It's in Belleville, um, yeah. which, you know, I was pretty impressed with. So um, we have a traditional farming community. We have, you know, people who love country music. So if that fits with your demo, then you might want to pull the trigger on that and, and, and see what type of ROI you're getting from that. Um, For sure. And they've yeah. moved into the digital marketplace as well. I mean, that's the other piece. Yeah, they they were pretty quick to react, sure, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that's great news. So going back, just because we talk about SEO and AdWords, keep in mind that if you're a nonprofit, there is a whole Google grant piece around AdWords as well. And do you know anything sure. about that? Um, not as much, um, unfortunately. Uh, although I do work for a non a nonprofit, these are these are some areas that we really would love to get into, and we're looking into that a little bit further. These grants, though, sometimes are agnostic. Uh, as an example, through Digital Main Street and the Shop Here program, there are Google Ads or AdWords grants. Uh, Facebook is giving you know Facebook advertising credits through that program, and of course Shopify as a, a key sponsor of those programs is offering three months free on their platform as well. Um, and for those credits, take advantage of those. Um, you know, they're looking for what, what they're doing with these credits is they're, they're still trying to attract businesses that aren't, uh, you know, are unwilling or unable to pull the trigger on digital or online advertising. There's still a huge, um, you know, marketplace for them to take advantage of, uh, although uh, you know, it is increasing quite a bit, um, they still got lots of room to improve their business. And I give credit to Google and Facebook. They've built those platforms over the past 10, 15, 20 years that originally started off as, as fun things or tools to use online, but have gradually transformed themselves into marketing and advertising companies. And make no, no mistake, Facebook, Instagram, and uh, Google offer free services in exchange for your attention, in exchange for your eyeballs, looking at their advertising. That's all it's really about. Yes. I remember years ago with one of my marketing students and I would give them the option of picking a company or an organization that they wanted to um, create a marketing strategy for. And somebody said, and of course, price being part of that. And the person said, well, I want to do our free community newspaper, but it's free. So there's no price. And I said, make no mistake that the price is about the advertising. It has nothing to do with what the consumer pays. So right. that it, the, the newspaper becomes a vehicle for advertising. And that's exactly what we've seen with Google, yeah. with Facebook, with Instagram that's and right. YouTube. YouTube is phenomenal. People are making scads of cash by preparing content that other people want to watch. And advertisers have glommed onto that as an opportunity for them to get their message in front of you. Sure. Um, YouTube is the number two search engine right now. And you wouldn't think of YouTube as a search engine. You think of it as a streaming video platform, but that's exactly what it is. When I want to learn how to do something, and by the way, for everybody watching and listening to this too, if you want to learn about any of the things that we're talking about, I urge you just to go to YouTube and type in how to, and then those keywords. 
the right. key to finding um, good quality uh, tutorials and lessons and content about any one of these subjects is in the filter. So once you search for these results, go into the filter and then you can filter by either upload date if you want the most current stuff, um, but then you can filter even more by uh, rating and view count. And I find mm -hmm. that view count in particular, the cream does rise to the top for the most part, especially when it comes to tutorials and just convey and people conveying knowledge online as opposed to just goofy entertainment, you know, watching some family vlog. When it comes to how to do this stuff, the most popular and most viewed videos tend to be the ones that um, are the best. And yeah. you can certainly filter through them on your own, but uh, if you want to learn how to do any of this stuff um, that, we're, that we're discussing, make YouTube your first stop. You can learn just about anything. <laughs> right. I fix my toilet using a YouTube tutorial. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, but th by the same token, if any of our um, participants here today are experts in some space, this is a great opportunity for them to also leverage that as a search engine tool that helps them. So you pair up yeah. your Google and your Facebook and whatever with YouTube and share them on all different platforms. It gives you the opportunity to be in that space because we talked a and lot. This is we're developing, yeah. This yeah. Is we're developing a good marketing and advertising plan when you are planning all of this out. And, and, and one of the businesses that you are, are talking about could be a, a great uh, benefit in order to make this an overall plan. I do urge anybody that's trying this to certainly plan this out. I would, I would say dip your toes in anything that you find interesting. Uh, I wouldn't exclude any particular platform or method right off the bat, um, but make sure that you're planning what you're doing and you're not being haphazard about it. Um, one thing I do want to really uh, emphasize too, before we go any further, um, you might've heard of saying something to the effect that you can't market a turd. You have to make sure that your business and your product and your service is top notch. If you've not put that investment into making sure that your business is where you want it to be and that your service is where you want it to be and you're selling products that you're proud of uh, and you already have that good core if you're already in existing business, um, put the time and effort into doing that. Um, if you try to market a business that um, has issues, those will come out. Those will come out in your customer service. Those will come out in um, people who are, have no qualms about being keyboard warriors online and uh, making sure that uh, people are fully, you know, versed in all the things that they don't like. So um, to that end, uh, along with that great customer service and, and providing that feedback online and making sure that you're thanking people for their, their great response to, you know, your business, um, that customer service has to be on the other side too, where you're solving problems and making sure that issues are addressed right away. This is a great opportunity for that. When the internet wasn't around and customers had issues, you were lucky if you heard about it. I mean, it might, it might be awful that you do, but you're lucky because that's only one out of 10 people that are going to come back to you and say that, you know, hey, I've got a problem with this product. Hey, I didn't like this customer service. Um, uh, they're, they're, they're bringing that to you. So you can not only address it with them, but hopefully prevent it from happening in the future. So right. uh, these are, and this is a great opportunity to address this stuff at a granular level. And, right. and really fine tune how great your business can be. And that goes right back to marketing 101. Uh, we used the first conversation I'd have with my students and I taught online and it, part of it was, what do you think is most important? The four P's, you know, you've got your product, you've got your promotion, you've got your price and you've got your place. And the first conversation we'd have is what do you think is the most important P? And because everybody seems to gravitate towards promotion as marketing, oftentimes, until you really think about it, you don't realize, unless you know what your product is and who you're trying to serve and the need you're trying to fulfill, if you don't have that figured out, it's kind of like a three-legged stool and the seat is your product. So if you don't have mm -hmm. your seat fastened firmly, if you put too much emphasis onto any one of those legs, whether it be promotion, price, or place, all of a sudden something's going up where? So, <laughs> it's, so it is, it's really then, important. <laughs> yeah, as a, as a great um, test or anecdote for that whole thing, if, if uh, you haven't seen the documentary on the disastrous fire festival, a music festival that was all oh. marketing and zero product, product um, you know, don't be that business that gets the documentary made about it. 
Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <the> lesson. <laughs> <laughs> no, very true. So one of the things that I put on the kind of the leader for encouraging people to join us was the idea of booster bust because it doesn't matter if you're a business and you've put some if you're a business or an organization or you have a page if you've created a page on facebook you have been asked to boost your post and it's a really easy kind of it's cheap it looks like it's going to make it happen you're going to reach thousands of people or is that a bust so tell me more yeah, well, certainly you're seeing that a lot. I see it a lot all the time. I manage several pages on Facebook. I manage one for the organization that I uh, work for, uh, Community Learning Alternatives, who's been uh, kind enough to uh, allow me to be here during these um, during these sessions. But um, in managing pages, you'll certainly see boosting coming up quite a bit. It's inexpensive. You can do it right away. You know, one click and it's boosted. Uh, but let's be clear about what they're doing and what this is. Um, it's one of a couple of different products that Facebook offers. Uh, it's an inexpensive thing to do. I think it's four or five dollars. I don't remember what it is these days. And the reason why I don't remember it is because I don't recommend it. Here's what boosting does for one of your posts. You can boost, it'll boost a post, which means it's a post you created or a post you're going to create. Um, it is not an ad campaign. It's not even an advertisement and it's not targeted. So what it's doing is you're creating a post for your existing followers on Facebook. You have 200 followers or so on Facebook. The, you know, you you could create a post and put it out there, and hopefully, you know, two to ten percent of them might see it. Depends on what when they're on Facebook at one day, what day and at what time. But once it's gone, it's gone unless they're actively looking on your page. Then they'll see it, of course. Boosting just posts it again. That's all, and it's only posts it again for the people who are already following your page or all already following your business. Um, so they're kind of already pre-qualified and pre-sold on you more or less um, versus Facebook advertising where you can set the budget um, from, you know, a couple of dollars a day to as much as you want. You are in complete control of how much you're spending on Facebook advertising. You can target the number of people. You can target the, 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 the geographic area that you're looking at. But most importantly, uh, it's demographics, it's age groups, it's um, interests occupation, what, whatever that is, and then you're paying for advertisement, which means that your ad is going into the feeds of people that don't follow you on Facebook, that might not be familiar with your business at all, but they're into what you're doing. So if I have a business that sells these great, inexpensive, yet beautiful watches for men, I might want to target men 18 to 55 or 18 to 65 who are into style in some way and you know um are into a particular subject like sports depending on what product you know you can again narrow down that funnel so that you're spending money on the right people you're not advertising to people that might not be into it you know it, you're not spending money on on say advertising to 14 year olds or to people who aren't into men's men's accessories whatever it is um that's a much more valuable uh, investment for your advertising money than boosting. I do not recommend boosting in almost any situation. It's really, uh, it's, it's akin to late, late fees at Blockbuster Video. It's really, it's just a, it's just a revenue grab. It really is. And yeah. I say that honestly, because I worked for Blockbuster Video for years and years. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, and in all that, I mean, the thing is, Facebook can get rich off, people got rich off of pennies. The banks got rich off of the, you know, the half cents. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't, it certainly represents a financial gain to Facebook, but it doesn't really oh, yeah. represent, yeah. It's all so, about scale. Like they can charge four bucks for a boost, but they're doing this on an international level. I mean, I haven't done the search on it or the research, but I would love to know how much they, they make. From yeah. Facebook. Yeah. Anyway, so you don't necessarily need to be part of that uh, mix. Um, and the other thing is, if you're watching, if you understand how to look at your insights, and I'm guessing this might be a conversation that you would engage with a little more closely if somebody went to see you directly, you would take some time to go through the insights on their social media space and say, okay, this is where you're getting your organic reach now, and this is how you're reaching people. These are the posts that are most positive, and these are the things that are engaging your customers or your fans or whatever that is you're trying to reach. And paying attention to those insights and understanding what makes the connection is also going to help guide your 
guide your marketing strategy or your promotional strategy. Like figure out what your demographic, your ideal customer, who is that person and what engages them most. So those are all pieces. Yeah, and, and Facebook provides tons and tons of back-end information on this uh, through their page manager app and platform. There's an individual app you can get for mobile, mobile that's just for managing your Facebook page. Um, plus there's a section of course on the back end of your, or of your Facebook page for doing just that for scheduling posts. And then you can see, um, all the insights and, and, uh, demographic data that you're, you're, or all the data that you're getting from that advertising after the fact. There are also third party services and platforms that can help with this as well. Things like Hootsuite, HubSpot, a bunch of different platforms that offer, for, you know, as a paid service, even deeper granular, um, insights into, into your advertising campaign with all of these platforms. And by the way, I, I've just been learning recently, um, not only for uh, is Facebook, of course, is strong for you know, business to consumer advertising. If you're a business to business, you know, B2B business, and you're looking to advertise in that regard, LinkedIn is where you want to go. LinkedIn now has B2B advertising and it operates in almost uh, you know, the exact same way. But uh, I would definitely, definitely look at LinkedIn. The pricing is fantastic. You're getting, again, that you know, micro-targeted granular uh, advertising funnel that you're looking for. Uh, you can you can market on LinkedIn by job title. How yes. powerful is that? There was a time where I had to dig and search and go through directories and make calls to find out who that point person is and then create my own list and then have to make manual email lists and do all that nonsense. Um, you can you can target all the different vendors and uh, and businesses in your industry and your field and get right to those people, providing of course that they're on LinkedIn. Sure. No, and I was, you took words right out of my mouth because that's exactly, I was going to say, so what about LinkedIn? Because that from a professional side of things is becoming a more active um, platform for sure. Yeah. And I'm seeing more and more people and they, they're doing exactly what you say. They're finding you based on your access to information or whether or not your connection to a service that they have. So that's uh, that's a really interesting. And we also see recruiting as a huge issue in our community. So if part of your goal is to bring people into your organization, hoping to employ them, LinkedIn is a perfect space for that. That's, yeah, and that's a great sidebar uh, to that too. I have a, a family member, a, a guy in particular, and I always praise him whenever I see him because you know he's a heavy construction worker, um, but he's never been unemployed because he just organically and just naturally is using Facebook and leveraging the power of Facebook just on his own, uh, or not Facebook, sorry, my apologies, LinkedIn, yeah. Yeah. to, um, to uh, constantly be employed. He is in demand all the time. He's getting regular messages from different people in, you know, in, in the construction industry, different uh, foremans and site managers from all across Canada. Um, uh, he is very rarely unemployed because he's using just the organic, not even spending any money, this is the organic power of, of LinkedIn to reach out to um, the key players in all the companies that he wants to target and right. just flat out message them, just direct. The power of direct message, by the way, if you don't want to spend any money right away, just the power of direct message uh, on a business level as opposed to, you know, personally where you're just DMing, you know, Jessica Alba because you want to propose. If you're <laughs> actually you know, DMing, you know, the director of purchasing or the director of marketing or whoever the key player in that company, that's, that's, you know, that's a huge time saver, first of all, plus you're just, you know, getting right down to that, that key decision maker that's going to make or break your sale. Yeah. Right. Um, then do you want to jump onto Instagram and who's doing that now? Who's hanging uh, Instagram out Instagram is a very similar, I mean, you're, you, you're doing Instagram advertising now simultaneously with Facebook since the purchase of Facebook or of Instagram by Facebook. And I, I love it too. At the time, I think they were purchased for like four billion dollars or something, or was it one billion? I'm not sure. It was a you know, at the time, it was a ridiculous amount of money. And there were a few people out there who were saying, "Oh no, no, it's a steal. Trust us." But the majority of people were saying, "No, it's ridiculous. It's too much money." Well, now we're seeing Instagram as the, as certainly the Instagram and TikTok as the growth platforms right now. Um, but if you want to advertise on Instagram, that is actually integrated directly into your. Facebook app, or at least you can connect it and direct it and do it all in one platform now, all on one page where okay. you're creating that Facebook um, copy and, and visuals and advertising. Uh, and you can mirror that on Instagram, or I would also recommend doing some 
native stuff for both of these platforms. So making sure that you've got great visuals, uh, making sure you, you or somebody you are working with or you know can edit photos and add text and do the fun things that you've got to do to attract that attention on Instagram. Mm -hmm. But again, with Instagram, you can do that to, that to demographic micro-targeting just like you can on Facebook. Sure. Um, I, I, again, though, I would emphasize um, um, adjusting the content a little because Facebook is just natively a little bit better for text, although people have run on posts on Instagram as well. They're kind of you know, twisting the platform to suit what they're doing. Instagram, you know, traditionally is heavy on the visuals, while Facebook is more of a, a multifaceted, multi-use platform. Sure. Um, I haven't seen any questions in the chat, but certainly would recommend, like, welcome anyone doing that or um, if you're familiar with how to use uh, the meeting situ situation you can kind of raise your hand or you can uh, wave at us give us a reaction and we can tell whether or not you need uh, you want to see I'll put this on gallery view and you can tell me what you're looking for um, so what what else would you say that people need to know in terms of this whole digital marketing advertising piece. But well, what are, yeah, we talked thing, a little one, bit last week. We, sorry, I was just saying we last last week no, no, we got a little bit into that whole get in the loop conversation. But are there other mm -hmm. things that we would consider? Um well this is this is might be a little bit off topic, but one of the things that I I uh really wanted to emphasize and now it is escaping me I do this every time. Um, when it comes to these types of uh, platforms and the engagement that you're giving them, um, I would make sure that you're providing value. I know I emphasized this before, but I can't emphasize it enough. I see a lot of new um, emerging startups or independent businesses, solo entrepreneurs, that sort of thing, immediately go for the ask. Um, they're not describing their product at all. They're not describing even, they're not even talking about the story. Um, it's a brand new business. They've opened their doors. Here's what I got. Buy it. Right. Well, what I've got no value at all from what you're providing at all. In fact, I don't even know who you are or where you came from. So the, the first piece of added value is just tell your story um, and create content around that, whether it be written, whether it be a video, whether it be a, you know, a series of photos, a text on them, whatever. Tell your story. People love that stuff. It's honest. It's genuine. Tell people why you're in the business you're in and then offer value to those prospective customers. How to do this things to look for, top 10 this. Even if it's just products that you have that you're proud of and you want to show off, you could have, you know, top five best camera lenses or, you know, here are the top three lawnmowers we have for sale right now. Obviously, the lawn season's almost over, but you have the top three <laughs> snowblower brands you need to be looking sure. for, you know, features to look for, that sort of thing. Providing value to your customers instead of just immediately making that sales pitch. I, I would say one out of every 10 pieces of of marketing content you create should be an actual pitch, an actual ask. Fair um, enough. I would be just giving, 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 giving. It's an old adage, but it works. Provide so much value to your customer that they feel guilt-ridden if they buy anywhere else. <laughs> and again, it's going back to that idea of building that relationship with your customer and the different levels that you have to exist in a virtual world to make that happen, even if you do, provide your services in person, even if you do have a brick and mortar space. Yeah. They're going to do 90% of their, people do 90% of their shopping online. Even if only 10% were buying back in January, 90% of the shopping was happening online first. And is, that- Yeah, that's why it's important to make sure that you're, as part of your business, your, your website is where you want it to be. And those product descriptions, those visuals, the layout, everything that is, is inherently attractive about what you're putting out there uh, about your business um, is at a point that you're happy with. Um, because with this marketing, you're trying to establish trust, establish credibility, establish that you're a knowledgeable uh, expert or, or source, reliable source in your field, um, because that's who I'm gonna go to uh, when I want uh, that product or that service is somebody that I trust, somebody that I think knows what they're doing, so you got to make sure that your business is at a point where you can confidently say, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm the person, I'm the business. This is the business that you need to come to for these services, these products, and solving these problems, more importantly. Right. 
Um, we had a, we did have a question about the Google AdWords and it's a $10,000 grant. It's been around for a long time. I know I've been volunteering with an organization that has been using it for a number of years. And it it's great. I mean, it, I think it's very little pressure on the organization to be involved with that process. Do you know a little bit more about that? I know you said you didn't know, but maybe. Um, well, I do know that certainly that they're reaching out to business to businesses to um, make it easier to dip their toes in that water. Um, it's still a, you know, a very foreign platform for so many businesses out there. Um, mm -hmm. And they're, it, it's, it's a great way to expand their reach. It doesn't cost Google anything. Um, no. because we're dealing with digital products and digital services. Um, the process for applying for these grants is usually fa fairly straightforward. Um, unfortunately, with grants that size, I'm not usually dealing with them. I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with a lot of the, the credits and offerings that they are doing through programs like Digital Main Street, uh, which right. is a key program that I'm working with right now. Sure. I would, do, I would do lots of research. I would simply go into a Google search engine and start doing, there's tons of information on there. I'd start doing the reading and, and see if it's something that's right for you. Well, I think, again, it comes down to the idea of where, where do you live with your customers or where do you live with your clients? And if Google is where they find you, then Google AdWords are a great advantage. If that's not where you're being found or if you're being drowned out or if you're extremely localized, sometimes it doesn't necessarily benefit because it's hard to say. Alternatively, and I'll just kind of summarize where we started with this, that from a Google perspective, you can pay for AdWords or you can pay to be, you can pay for your SEO to push you to the top of the list in a local search or in a search in general based on what your service is, where you're located, but the free version of this, again, time versus money, is that if you can make sure your Google My Business is up to date, stays current, that you ask your customers to provide you reviews so that you move up higher on that list when someone Googles, you know, Chinese food in Belleville, then anybody who went to your restaurant and liked your food, if they liked your food more and your review was higher, you're likely to go up there and that stuff is free. So yeah. that's how you can make Google work for you if you don't wanna pay. Yeah. Facebook, again, the same idea. I think we're looking at, there's an opportunity to engage with your audience through organic reach and whether or not you want to pay for that because you are looking for new customers. So if you're engaging right. with the people who already love you, then do that with engaging posts and then every 10th one can be an actual ask or a call to action. But in the meantime, you're building, you're consistently building that relationship where they become to trust you. So when you do yeah. have something to offer them, they go, of course, I would want to do that. Exactly right. That's exactly right. And I would take advantage of all the bonuses and credits and, and a grants and free things that these platforms have to offer. Um, with the caveat that you use them to their max and then once that is done, do not immediately pull the trigger on whatever offer they're going to give you afterwards because what they're going to do then is off, give you a reduced rate and so on to get you to buy into advertising on those platforms with your actual hard-earned money because that's the ultimate goal, of course. Um, what I would, I would directly consider and analyze as, as hard as you can is what your return on what you've done so far is because let's be honest when you're on a website and you see google adwords at the top of a, a page or at the bottom of a page or in the sidebar of a page while you're reading that story about what uh hugh jackman's up to these days you're probably not looking at those ads or if you are looking at them you're certainly not clicking on them um so they have now limited value they're an older form of online advertising google adwords and google adsense because they're one of the originators of online advertising. Mm -hmm. But it starts to become noise after a while, especially if you get onto some of these websites that are just, but it's a donut of advertising, which is content. And then there's, there's, and it's just riddled with ads in the, right in the paragraph. It's hard to tell if, is the article over? Is there an ad? Oh no, the rest of the article is below this ad and the next ad and the next ad. And it gets frustrating after a while. Well, even um, games. Yeah. Any game that you play now, if it has ads in it, I mean, that's exactly, you, you become, um, we've become immune almost to yeah. most of it. So oh, it is. It can get a little annoying. I know I, I was listening to a, a podcast with the guy who actually coined the term freemium and I wanted to reach through my phone and strangle him. 
<laughs> it's just one of those <laughs> words. Nails at yeah. premium. Yep. You and if anybody <laughs> noticed in the chat, uh, Steve also member, um, Steve mentioned, Steve Wilkes is here again from Get in the Loop. And they have a very specific digital marketing strategy that allows you to put so many offers up. And again, if you've connected to that app, it gives you an opportunity to really see what your favorite places are doing. So there's a, that's a, a very localized and gives you, and from a, a business owner or a retailer or customer service type perspective, gives you an opportunity to connect directly with the stores or people that you, that you shop at regularly. Now, um, there is another um, another avenue that you could necessarily look at if you don't want to spend the money at all and you want to try some organic reach. You can certainly do that with a well-planned marketing campaign, whether it be you know, giveaway, you know, calls to action, that sort of thing. And you've got time to sit online and post 10, 15, 20, 30 times a day. You can do that in the hope that the people that are liking and following your your page and your business continue to like and share you give them a reason to like and share you know you you start educating yourselves in the in the tactics of doing that of organic growth and organic reach it's not nearly what it was uh, but if you put in that work and that's where i get back to the beginning and if you've got you know four or five hours at night and you're sitting there um you know take that time and sit on the phone and and address all those comments and thank all those people who said something and gave you a review and go on to all the different platforms that you could possibly think you might be mentioned in do a google search for your business find it where people are talking um, mm -hmm. and just see how how well you can do on your own without that ad spend um and see if you can do a, a little bit of organic reach that way you'll see how difficult it is not by the level of skill you need but just how much you know how much clicking and time it can, can take and that's where um, online advertising um, kind of streamlines that in a in a in a pretty inexpensive way, where um, it doesn't have to be as hard work as that. Although if you, you can do both, if if your business is new and your sales are 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 low but climbing, and you've got the time, then now is that time to put in that organic work and to and to just get online and and engage with everybody you possibly can. Uh, you know, search for those terms in Twitter. If, if you know, you're a sporting goods store and it's football season, you go into Twitter and you search Belleville and you search football and you search sports and you do all those things and see who in this area is talking about football or an NFL or the CFL or local football, high school, whatever it is that you're, you're wanting, wanting to target. These platforms are also search engines. You can search in Facebook. You can search in Twitter and Instagram is very powerful. And so you can see what people are talking about, especially in Instagram and Twitter, where they're very public platforms as opposed to Facebook. We either have to be a member or following a page or being a friend where there are a few more closed loops in Facebook while Twitter is open to everybody. If I want to see what anybody has posted on Twitter from, you know, the queen of England all the way down, you can see that it's all public. I can chat with Jennifer Anderson if she wants to engage with me, but uh, you know, that's <laughs> all public. Which right. is great. You can reach out to those people and just hustle. Just you know, you've got time and 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 you can reach out to these folks. It and you know, it might take five, ten, twenty posts and and messages to these folks before you even get you know any kind of engagement. And you might not at all. Um, it is truly a numbers game when it comes to stuff like this, but it can be done still. Right now, it still can be done anyway. Okay. Well, good enough. Well, thanks, Jamie. I don't see any questions. Um, I think Steve's put some stuff in the chat. So if anybody's looking at how to get in the loop, that's something worth checking out. Um, anyway, we're Again, 12 when, uh, 40. when you're, yeah, I just wanted to add one more thing. When you're looking for information about how to do these things, when you're looking for uh, uh, knowledge and learning on uh, these advertising platforms and how to market your business, uh, be selective on those uh, sources of information. Find out if they're selling anything at the bottom of that page you're reading. Um, that could be a key indicator on, on how high quality that source is. There's plenty of, of great mm -hmm. sources of information online on <laughs> digital marketing. It's one of the favorite subjects online. So there's, there's lots of garbage out there. There's, some, some, there's definitely some sales funnels out there where 
you know, you've got a, a 50 foot long web page and at the bottom is, is a, a call to action because they want you to buy their, their, you know, multi-stage process, their marketing plan or their book or whatever it is they're selling. Um, but if you find a, a platform that's not selling anything except for the ads in their sidebar uh, and it's a, a reputable source, do that back research. It doesn't take much, um, you know, search who they are, search, search who they own or who they're owned by. And uh, if you're interested, feel free to reach out to me by email. I'd be happy to recommend some sources uh, of uh, information on these platforms. One off the top of my head is a website called HubSpot. They do have a, a product, but their information and the things that they post is, is quite good. Um, and I repost some of their content on the Belleville e-commerce assistance program webpage. So you can find some of that there. Um, great stuff as, well, from them, certainly. So just on that note, how do they find you again? And I'll include this in the email, but it is, we've got Jamie Hoskin, who's the e-commerce advisor for the city of Belleville. Yes. And? yes, and you can go to uh, bellevilleecommerceassistance.ca for our website. Um, you can also email me at uh, info at uh, bellevilleecommerceassistance.ca. You can also find a contact form at the bottom there. You can just don't want to email me, you just send me a message through the form as well. Okay, and we will we'll make sure that this video goes live in a couple of hours. And if you want to refresh yourself on what we talked about today, that'll be fine. And then next week, I should have had this on my screen about what we're going to be talking, but we'll do, we have one more scheduled for next week, then we'll take a wee bit of a break because we have Small Business Week happening the week of October 20, 19th to 23rd. And we'll do one more on our e-commerce series. And that's when we'll really get into the nitty gritty of what does an online shopping platform look like? Great, great. Well, thanks for having me today. It's been uh, great talking about this. And I okay. uh, look forward to our next session. Perfect. Thanks, everyone, for joining us today. We'll look forward to seeing you again. Bye. Bye, everyone.